PCB Design Tutorials on PCBWay, where you can submit a PCB design related tutorial and get rewarded. It can be a video or a written article about PCB design, tips and tricks or your process, in any language you like. Each published submission will get you $50 to $100 in coupons and 500 PCBWay beans, with a chance to win up to $800 in cash and 2000 beans. So what are you waiting for? Oh, yeah, right, you're waiting for this video, of course. By no means am I an expert in PCB design. However, I have learned some tips and tricks over the years, and I'd like to share them with you. So here are 10 tips to help you improve your designs. Number one, using reference designs. Data sheets, for example, feature a typical application section. This is usually a good starting point. Also, open source designs. If somebody else already designed something that works, use that. For me, that is the exact reason of open source. Development boards. Nearly all development boards have their schematics and designs available. If you've used the development board for breadboarding, use the parts of the design that you need. Number two, working in blocks. And by that I mean components that go together. Before placing your components on the board, try to arrange the parts that belong together first and then move the whole block. Also, moving components that need to be in a specific place first. For some components, placement doesn't have to be precise. Something like a USB connector may need to be in a specific place, so move that first. Number three. Move, rotate and repeat. And then again, try to find the easiest route to layout. Most of the time this means moving, rotating components multiple times until you find the easiest way to route them. It's kind of like a sliding number puzzle. Try to keep traces short. Ideally you would be able to route traces straightforward without having unnecessary long routes and layer switches. Number four, route important traces first. Route traces that are sensitive to noise first. Think about USB, HDMI, I2C or other data lines. Basically, traces that may be affected by a layer change, length and neighboring traces. Number five, use a trace width calculator. When a trace is going to carry a decent amount of current, make sure it can handle it. Using a trace width calculator, you can find the minimum width for your specific use. Make sure to select the right copper weight of your board and for two layer boards, use the width given for external layers in the air. And also, make sure to scale up your vias. Number six, net labels. All nets have a label. This is how the DSC knows if everything is as how it should. But Net labels that you can read and understand are very powerful. Giving it a name that makes sense to me is a good idea. Number seven, printing on paper. If you already have the components, print the layout on paper on a one-to-one -one scale and check that the components actually match the footprint you're using. It can also help with component spacing because you can easily lose sense of scale when you're in your EDA. Having a physical reference can help you see if there's actually enough room between components. If you are for example designing your board to have two USB thumb drives next to each other, it's worth the time checking if that is actually physically possible. Number 8. Including extra footprint. For example, if you are unsure if a line needs a pull up or a pull down in your design, it won't cost you anything extra just to put both footprints on your PCB and only populate the one you need. Or maybe you want some indicator LED, but you're not sure if you're going to use it. Put it there anyway. Another thing is extra filtering capacitors. If you discover during testing that, for example, your power supply is noisier than you expected, adding an extra capacitor can be a hassle if you don't have the room for it. So why not add some extra decoupling footprints just in case? If you have room for it, include test points for all signals you might want to debug later. 
Trying to probe a pin of a small IC is a hassle. A test point is a lot easier and also it's more reliable. The 3D viewer. During the initial layout phase of my design I regularly switch between layout view and the 3D viewer. It gives me an idea of where things are in space and if the layout I want makes sense. It also reminds me that although I'm designing in 2D space, the final product is going to be in 3D space. Number 10. Use the DRC. No seriously, use it. The DRC design rules check lets you know if you have made any mistakes during routing. For example, if traces are too close to each other, vias are too close to pads or traces, if you have unconnected traces or wrongly connected traces. You can also set the DRC up that it will flag if you do not meet your PCB manufacturer's specification. When you do not meet these specifications, your board will at best cost you more, but even worse, they will contact you saying that they can't manufacture your board. So, go to the capabilities page of your manufacturer and look up things like minimum trace width, via drill size and via annular ring size. These things helped me a lot when I started out. But, of course, there are much more tips and tricks for all skill levels. So be sure to leave your tip in the comment section below. Or even better, upload them to PCBWay. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!